All right. This is an explanation of weekly project number five about pore elasticity. We're going to solve uh, two problems here. The first problem is about the determination of the BO coefficient from data uh, from the laboratory. In this case, uh, if you click in this link, you're going to go to the geomechanics uh, Jupyter repository uh, that I own. And in here, you will find this file called BO coefficient experiment. Let's click in there and uh, let's see what we have. Uh, so there are several files, but the BO coefficient experiment should be right there. So let me open this in a new tab. And uh, let's see if it's possible to visualize this in draw, but no, it's not. So I'm going to open it. And here I'm going to get data for this experiment in which I have, as a function of time, loadings of pore pressure and confining pressure. In this test, the vertical deviatoric stress uh, was kept uh, constant. So I'm just going to scroll through the data. You will see that it's always about 500. This is column D. You are going to need this into your calculation, but, uh, but let's just hold on on that. The most important thing here is that pore pressure and confining pressure are going to be changing. And with that, you're going to have changes of radial strain and axial strain. All right, so let's see what you have to do. Let me move this here to the right. And uh, first, you have to plot pressure and stresses as a function of time. This is going to allow you to see how uh, there are these cycles applied. And uh, we're going to have that at sometimes as pressure goes, uh, pore pressure goes up, confining pressure stays constant. And when confining pressure stays constant, the pore pressure goes up. So let's, let's just do quickly this. Anyways, I'm not going to solve the, the entire problem. I want, I want you to picture what I'm saying. And let me insert here a plot. All right, so you see here we have the pore pressure as a function of time. You see how it increases in cycles. And I'm going to plot as well the confining pressure. And now we have the confining pressure. Here's the confining pressure, always higher than the pore pressure. And we have alternating cycles. Like, for example, let's take a look at the first one and let me zoom in so you can see a little bit better. From second zero to more or less uh, 180, when the confining pressure increases, the pore pressure stays constant. And then after the, the confining pressure stays constant and the pore pressure increases. And like that, for uh, several uh, cycles increasing in pore pressure and confining pressure, and several others decreasing in confining pressure and pore pressure. The result of this is going to be that when you calculate the effective stress in this uh, plot in terms of the SAG effective stress without a correction for the BO coefficient, you're going to obtain the data that it's all over the place and it's not a unique relationship of stress and strain. If this were to be an elastic material, you would expect stress and strain to be, to have just one uh, relationship and one line. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to fix this effective stress uh, law adding an effective stress uh, or a BO coefficient 
so that you collapse this data into just one single line. And uh, I'm going to explain also this in, a, uh, in detail in a separate lecture. Uh, this is what, what is next. And uh, well, you will see a step, step, step by step the method. All right. So um, there are. Um, uh, th this is the main part of the problem, and also there is uh, one more uh, question over here that asks about undrained loading. And again, the theory of the undrained loading will be explained in a separate video. Just uh, hold on to that. But let's just uh, let me tell you a preview of this. The idea is to get to know if when we increase the confining pressure trying to hold the pore pressure constant, it will let enough time for the fluid to get out of the pore space as we compress it. That's the idea about drain and drain loading. If you leave the solid enough time uh, for that fluid to get out of the pore space, that's what is called drain loading. If you compress so fast that when you're compressing the pore solid, you're also compressing the fluid, that's called an undrain loading. And we'll see later the questions that you need in order to verify that. So the first problem is just about then finding this uh, PO coefficient with this experimental data of a real rock. The second exercise is using the theory of pore elasticity in order to predict what is called a depletion stress path and what is the variation of the total principal stress with depletion. And this is something very important because it affects uh, drilling and hydraulic fracturing activities. For example, when you deplete a reservoir and uh, later you uh, drill a wellbore through a depleted reservoir, often you find problems of drilling because the fracture grading decreases and you could have events of low circulation at, uh, at those depths. And also it is important for hydraulic fracturing because when you deplete the reservoir, the new pressure that you need in order to fracture the same reservoir uh, changes proportionally to the amount of depletion. All right, so basically this is what we want to, to calculate. And in order to do that, we'll use analytical equations which we're going to see again in a separate lecture. And we're also going to use a numerical simulator, which is called CMG, uh, which is a software that also is very powerful uh, dealing with uh, multi-phase fluid flow and compositional fluid flow and uh, in general for reservoir simulation. And we're going to run the geomechanics module of CMG. CMG fortunately is equipped with uh, pore elasticity and, and can handle some of these problems that we're going to see in, uh, in class. In order to do that, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to log in into the computer laboratory something of computers. I don't remember exactly what is what LRC stands for, but, uh, but here you have the link. And uh, through this link, you're gonna be able to uh, connect to the computers in, in our department of petroleum and geosystems engineering. If you are a PG student, uh, you should be able to go ahead and log in into that uh, right now. If you are in another department or in another school, uh, you may have to contact our uh, IT guy that I'm going to send, send you uh, the, his email uh, later in a separate announcement. All right, but uh, you can use this software. And uh, here there are uh, two other files. Uh, actually, there are a couple of files. There are, let's see, uh, four files that you're going to need and they are all in the Geomechanics uh, Jupyter repository. And here you can download those and you can start uh, running your simulations. You're gonna have to modify a few more things 
And what we're going to do eventually is to simulate deplet depletion with CMG. And after we simulate that depletion, you're going to plot the stress path of the state of stress in the reservoir as a function of time, as a function of depletion. And if you remember, this is one of the first things that we did in the, in the class was to, to get to know what is the stress path, how we can use invariants to plot the stress path. And this is very useful because we can plot the state of the stress in a given uh, place as a function of time and see how that evolves. All right. So uh, there's still quite a bit of, uh, of knowledge that we have to go through in order to, to fully deploy and understand uh, these two exercises. Uh, but, but you can get started with exercise number one. And then uh, by next week, uh, you should be ready to do exercise number two.